Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're gonna talk about data assets and sharing communication between blueprints. Now, there's a lot of different ways we can achieve this, you know, with casting, interfaces, components, but it really comes down to what you're trying to achieve or what you're trying to solve. So with casting, you can end up with a lot of dependencies, right? So if you cast to another class, you're going to get all of that information and you're gonna be loading it. Static meshes, skeletal meshes, materials, etc. So a good example of this would be if you're trying to share some sort of character settings or character variables. So let's try and set up an example. I'm going to create a new primary data asset. We'll look for data asset. We want primary data asset. And we'll just call this uh, PDA character information. And we're going to create a data asset and we'll base this on our PDA character information. And we'll just call this DA character. And let's set something up simple. So in our blueprint, we're going to add a new variable and we will call this location. And we'll change this type to transform and we'll compile and save. So now in our DA character, we can see our location, right? Zero, zero, zero. So now that we have our data asset, let's go ahead and use this. So in my third person folder, I'm gonna look for our BP third person character. And we'll open this up. And in here, we wanna add our data asset. So we'll make a new variable and we'll call this DA. And then we're gonna look for our blueprint, our PDA, character, information, object reference, and we'll just make this visible, compile, save. And now based on this object type, we're gonna put our DA character in here. Compile and save. Now we're going to use this to set information. And while you probably don't want to do this on event tick, we're going to do it on event tick. So we'll look for event tick and we are going to get transform, get actor transform. So we're getting the transform of our third person character. And with our data asset, we're going to get it and we're going to set our location on that data asset. So we'll hook this up to event tick and we'll hook get actor transform up to the location. And we'll compile and save. And let's just go ahead and open up our DA character so that we can see it. We can see the location. And now if we go ahead and hit play, we can see that our data asset is updating. So these data assets variables, you can set them and you can get them and they can be shared between different assets. So let's expand on this example. I'm going to create an asset that can be spawned and I'm going to create a spawner. So we'll create the spawner first. We'll call this blueprint class from actor. We'll call this BP spawner. And the first thing we want to do is we want to add a reference to our data asset. So we'll make a new blueprint. We'll call this DA. And we're going to change this to our primary data asset, our primary data asset character information. And we'll expose this, compile, save, and we'll link up our DA character. And once again, you most likely don't want to do this on event tick, but it works for fast demonstration. We are going to get our data asset and we are going to get our location, our character location. And from here, we are going to spawn actor from class. And we don't actually want this to spawn directly on the player, in the player. So we're going to split the struct pin and we're going to split the location. 
And on the Z, we're going to drag this out and we will add 200 units. And we're going to recombine all this. So we will make vector. And then we will make transform. And then we'll plug this back in to our spawn transform. And on event tick, we will spawn. Let's, let's add a delay. We'll delay this so it's not rapid fire. We'll make it every 10 seconds. Plug that in and we will compile and save. And now we need to spawn something. So we are going to create a new blueprint. We'll call this, we'll make this an actor. We'll call this BP thing. We'll open that up and we will just add a static mesh. And by default, we'll make this mesh a cube. And we'll compile and save. And then in our spawner, let's choose BP thing. And we'll compile and save. So based on our player's location that's being passed to the data table, we're going to get that data table information and we are going to spawn a cube every 10 seconds. So let's go see this. All right, we'll hit play. So before we hit play, we need to put the spawner in there. This is kind of an observer. So now we'll hit play. There's our cube, and then we'll run around. We want a cube here, right? This could be a fun game. Wait for it to spawn again. Oh, now we can run over, try and get on there, try and get on there. <laughs> so yeah, you can use these data assets as a form of communication between blueprints instead of casting. Once again, it all depends on the situation. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.